three months in the 2006 disruption for the church of God to continue forward. It definitely seems that our Lord is doing a quick work and is well able to accomplish great things with that little handful of corn who have a made up mind to be the church of God. Even now it seems as a dream. Yet it is true and it will forever be part of our past. However, the church of God is not to be controlled by circumstances of the past or held captive by what the enemy has done. These obstacles are ours to use as a catalyst to move us forward to become that one new man. Yes, the fight has been long and hard. The temptation to look back to what once was and to wish for better circumstances for the here and now has been among us. But now, I declare now today, it is time that we launch an offensive. Now is the time to break forth on the right hand and left. Now is the time to strengthen all that remains. Let us have our ministers' conventions, district conventions, youth conventions, youth camps, auxiliary services, band services, and revivals, revivals, revivals. I said let us have revivals, revivals, revivals. The ministry, let me share with you about them. It is said of Peter and John that they were ignorant and unlearned men. But what made these men as, they, as well as others stalwarts of the faith? It was the fact that they had been with Jesus. This elevated them to the place of being a minister. And it elevated them to the place of being able to minister to kings and priests and then to the most lowly of means. It is being with Jesus that lifts us to a stature in Him. You see, all that is accomplished, all that we will, are able to achieve will be by His Spirit. Amen. Let us as the church of God stand with the ministry. First Sunday offerings and poundings are still a recommendation of the General Assembly for our pastors. It would be wonderful in our district conventions to receive grocery showers and love offerings for our district overseers. Regional and national conventions are a wonderful time to show our love and support for our overseers with a nice love offering and grocery shower. Overseers, I know when this uh, uh, touches you, it's hard to, to boost, but I want you to boost that in your regions. I want to see this for our overseers in the conventions and and the district conventions and our pastors on first Sunday. Standing with our ministry also involves not interfering with the work of others. I guess that's been the predominant theme through this address. Allow me to share again, once again, what Bishop Tomlinson said, quote, I'm sure we're all interested in the cause we have espoused. It is dear to our hearts and we are anxious to learn that the best methods to ensure prosperity and success... But we do not learn everything at once. We only learn a little at a time. Here a little and there a little, and sometimes we fail to learn even when we have been taught the important lessons that has been given us line upon line by our teacher, either the Holy Spirit in person or someone with whom He has used and anointed for the purpose. And it may be that mistakes and blunders have been made because we do not know. We are here again this year to learn a little more about God's way of doing things. We are naturally inclined to criticize and pass judgment. The moat hunting spirit is not dead yet. And I wish to say this kindly that I find a tendency among some of our people to want to criticize and pass judgment without knowing the full particulars concerning a matter. Close quote. When we tend to tear down and criticize others, we actually are being controlled by fear. I want to help us this morning. Fears of what others think or what others do and so on and so forth. But there is no fear in love. No moat problem in love. Perfect love does cast out all fear. Do you know what fear does? It brings torment. Mental, emotional, and sometimes physical torment. If we fear, perfect love is not in us and it actually will take us on a road of criticism. But perfect love brings us to maturity. Let us love one another. John said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one 
to another. Amen. Amen. We're doing good. I just want us to do a little better. Amen. Amen. Would you slip a hand up and say, Lord, I want to do better. I'm sure there's some today that don't fully agree with everything I've done. I want to do better for those that disagree with me. I want to be a better servant for you. If I've hurt anyone, I want to do better and not hurt you. The spirit of the church of God is one that we embrace, not push away. Some will not allow you to embrace. And sometimes you just catch them by the fingertips. That's when you fall on your knees and begin to pray. That division would go. Do we have some? Yes, we've got some. But we're doing good, Sister Mandy. God's going to help us. Do you believe that? God's going to help us. Give you some interesting information. In 2006, at our first assembly, we were 380 members strong. Praise God for those 380 that stood. 2007, we almost doubled to 739. 2008, we had grown to 2,389 members. According to my records today that we have in the office, we're somewhere very close to 4,000 members. But I've got better news than that. What was reported from this platform the last two or three days, now that's what was, this is what is, were somewhere around over 5,900 members today. An increase of over 3,500 members this last year. Isn't that wonderful? Somebody needs to say praise the Lord. Amen. We're now in 38 countries of the world with 13 new nations being added this year. Bishop Maya will be going to Brazil in October. Uh, we're sending missionaries in, uh, uh, I get my words wrong, Brother Juice, so I believe it's Mali over close to Nigeria. He's getting close to going to Malawi and South Africa and other places. So God's still opening. I'm glad to report, Brother Holbrook, that we've got increased numbers in all of our licensed ministries. Can we say praise the Lord? What God has done in less than three years is impressive to say the least. It's not James Neighbors' program. I told you that, or Jerry Wilder, you keep telling us, not because of our looks, and you can tell it both of us, we need help there. But it is by His Spirit that all things will be accomplished. And by His Spirit we shall be one. To the general staff, I wish to express great appreciation as well as love and gratitude to all without exception of the general staff of the Church of God. The three secretaries of the general offices, my wife, Sister Diane, my daughter, Sister Jill, and our general accountant, Sister Cordoza, almost my daughter. Without them, the work would not be accomplished. I'd like for you to give these three a round of applause for the hard work. I don't know where they're at, but God knows where they're at, and I appreciate the work that they have done. They work long and strenuous hours, and I appreciate them. Thank you for this ovation of applause. Our administrative coordinator, our field secretaries, our overseers, all of our auxiliary and helps coordinators, the ABM, CPMA, Sunday School, VLB, WMB, World Mission, World Language, Bible Training Institute, the Arise Shine, and the Evangelism Department. I'd like for you to stand if I just called your... ...are put in that office by the Holy Ghost and Praise you God. don't feel bad about it. Fulfill your office. Yes, you God. have God. up to this time. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know it's a burden upon him, but it's, every pastor will tell you he has the burden. Yes. He didn't tell me to speak like this. I, I, guess, I guess we better dismiss.
Our dear Father, we thank you.